Hey guys, so as usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So today I wanted to talk about everyone's favorite charting method, point and figure. Actually, nobody hardly uses this. It's kind of archaic. It was invented in 1898. Most people don't even know what it looks like, but let's run through it. It has some applications for Wyckoff, which will be my next video. So let me first show you how to even get to point and figure as an option on TradingView. Uh, what you can do is click on the candles. And you'll see all the way at the bottom. Last but not forgotten is the point and figure option. And when you click that, you'll first initially think that you may have clicked the wrong button. <laughs> and you'll see all these X's and O's, okay? Um, so the next thing to explain is the settings. So basically point and figure is a system not based on time, like traditional charts and candles, but based on price movement and price action. So each box is a given size depending on whatever you make it. I mean, you can make your box size 61 if you want. You can think of the box sizes, the higher box sizes kind of as like higher time frames versus the lower box sizes being a lower time frame. I found that the 15 setting works really well, um, but you're welcome to play around with whatever you want. So anytime the price goes up 15 won, it'll draw an X. Anytime it goes down 15 won, it'll draw an O. In order to switch from X's to O's, uh, the reversal needs to be three boxes. Um, and so that's your your other setting, uh, the reversal amount. I haven't really seen anyone use anything else besides three. You're welcome to play around with that. Um, let's just see what it looks like here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about point and figure to know what reason to change that reversal, so sticking with three is probably your best bet here. And big shout out to Emekmo on the Bitcoin market subreddit. He's the only reason why I'm even aware of what the hell this is. <laughs> so you can see this is a chart he made 30 days ago. He hasn't made one or uh, released one recently. Um, this was pre-triangle breakout. Um, and you can see he's got some notes on here. I'll explain some of this. Um, but one of the most important things to realize is that the support and resistance trend lines are always 45 degree angles. So you can see um, the triangle there. You can see the previous support uh, and resistance. Um, this is kind of easier to do on Excel than it is in TradingView. You get cleaner lines. Um, you get a cleaner chart. I just didn't take the time to do it because it takes a lot of time to do this all manually, obviously. Um, but it's something you can do like at the end of the day, or every day, or at the end of your trading session, um, just as an additional charting method to check for confluence, to check for signals. Um, there are all sorts of signals with uh, point and figure. There are all sorts of chart patterns. I'm going to talk about a few of them. Um, and you can always check out the point and figure subreddit. Uh, it's actually empty right now, so feel free to fill that up with information. Um, one good start is always Investopedia. Um, I'll explain some of these patterns here. Um, but these are actionable trading signals, uh, like a break of the triple bottom, break of the triple top. We've had all these happen in Bitcoin, um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the Bitcoin point and figure chart. Remember, these are not candles. This is not based on time. This is based on price action alone. Okay. Now you'll notice it looks very similar to the candle chart. Um, but remember, O's are, red O's are price decreasing by whatever your threshold is. And this, on this chart, it's 20. Um, so 20 points down, 20 yen, yuan. 20 yuan down. 
Um, green X's are 20 yuan up. Okay, so this is just the naked point and figure chart. You can see uh, we can draw trend lines here. Uh, we can draw channels. I'll show you what those look like. Um, these sort of clean up things like should I use this wick or not? Should I count uh, this level or this level as a support and resistance level? Um, those sorts of things and it kind of avoids like all the noise that there tends to be with a lot of uh, wiki wiki things so here's what just my interpretation of horizontal support and resistance looks like again it's not rocket science a lot of this is very similar to the candle chart um, you can see it actually looks a little cleaner here than it does on a candle chart it might look like this on the monthly or weekly, um, but it might not look this clean on the daily or lower, definitely. Um, again, you can see here's the ascending triangle that we broke out of. Uh, we broke a previous resist uh, support resistance line level, potential reversal zone, whatever you want to call it. Um, then we bounced on the next one jump to the next zone after we got out of this zone I mean it, it's all there obviously in hindsight but uh, you can see where the market structure comes from at least and you can also see that this drop again this is a bit arbitrary I just curve fit it here but uh, it matches previous support resistance levels here's another interesting and arbitrary resistance uh, horse diagonal um, if you look, this is just from all-time high, just pick two points, make a 45 degree angle, that's your resistance level. Um, so I'm just drawing this line, and once we break that line, we get a pop-up, right? And you can do the same here. Um, this would be a 45 degree angle. Once we break that, we pop up. Once we break this, we eventually get the pop, um, and I expect the same to occur now that we've had this definite top in. Um, once we break this top, I expect another pop. So that may mean uh, that we just, you know, fill in this 45 degree support and 45 degree resistance. We just fill this in. Um, and remember, that's not time, that's price action. Uh, so that could take much longer than you'd think if you were looking at a traditional candle chart, seeing uh, the triangle sort of trying to play out and squeezing. And again, here's another interpretation uh, just of channels, what those might look like. Maybe falling wedge here, I don't know. Um, ascending triangle here, again, triangle here. And again, this isn't rocket science because all this you can see pretty easily on the regular chart. Um, there are some advanced patterns that are useful for point and figure, so let's look at a few of those. So here we have both a break of a triple top and a break of a triple bottom. Um, so the first thing to note is you're looking for a three, three highs basically. Um, that were then exceeded on the third try. Um, that would be your bullish breakout signal. So your long entry would be the X that's the third highest, okay? Said in plain English. Um, and again, your breakout of a triple bottom would be the third break, the third uh, lower low, okay? Um, now these aren't exactly here we have we're getting lower lows here we're not getting higher highs here we're getting you know a previous level break so it's not completely clean um, the other thing you'll notice I drew in this 45 degree angle um, so that's another short entry signal once we break this support uh, that this is gonna go lower um, so this is just a triple top breakout or triple bottom breakout. Um, you can see those. This is on 15. Um, depending on how you want to play 
these charts. You can move it down to 10 or 5. Um, so yeah, you might want to play around with those settings just to dial in on how you want to trade on the point and figure stuff. So these next two are the catapult patterns, uh, which I think are probably the most actionable, tradable, profitable. Um, so obviously when you think of a catapult, you're thinking of something going far. <laughs> um, so what the traditional catapult pattern is, is a triple top or bottom followed by a triple, uh, excuse me, triple top or bottom followed by a double top or bottom breakout. Um, so in this case, this was the ascending triangle, you'll recognize. Um, there's another pattern here called a saucer bottom where you get uh, kind of like an inverted head and shoulders. You get a high, low, high. Um, so there's a, there's your first buy signal. Second buy signal is this triple top breakout. You get the third high breaking the previous two. Um, so that's a buy signal. Then you get a consecutive triple top breakout. Um, so that, those two together are what make up the catapult and boom. Again, this is hindsight. So use this to trade the point and figure charts in the future. So here's a great example of something I didn't see before we dropped um, because I wasn't really paying attention to point and figure and didn't really know much about it. Um, but what we have here is a bearish catapult. You can see we have a triple bottom break. Now whether or not the, tr the bottoms should be bottoms or tops should be horizontals, I'm not exactly sure. I'm just going to make this one diagonal because it's convenient. <laughs> um, but you can see on the, the third, this is technically a quad bottom break, um, but on this break, so we get the first triple bottom break and then we get the second double bottom break. That's a short entry signal right there. Um, so obviously that would have been super profitable. Uh, that's why I think the catapult patterns are something to watch for. There's a website that I'll link up that has a ton of information on point and figure and there's another website that breaks down all these patterns. And I'll link that up as well. Again, point and figure not really used that much nowadays that I'm aware of. Um, again, I only know of it because of a MECMO on Bitcoin markets. Shout out to Beauty Bubble for pointing me to some more information on point and figure. Um, like, dislike, share the video, let me know what you guys think of point and figure. I think it's pretty cool because it's not based on time. I think that's the number one thing. And the other thing is it's kind of avoiding the, the super noisy day-to-day -day action and it's just looking at purely price action. So question of the day, do you use any altered candlesticks like Heikinashi or uh, bar pattern, for instance, and have you noticed any advantages or disadvantages to that? So as always, happy trading.